The instinct we have to protect the ones that we love is a basic primal one. Whether it's a cerebral measure to provide shelter and safety, or a physical response towards a perceived threat, it exists in almost all of nature's creatures. This unassuming property nestled deep in the woods of South Carolina is man's manifestation of that instinct. Although it isn't here for the protection of fellow human beings. You see, this is the Turtle Survival Center, and it might just be the most important turtle facility on Earth. The passionate volunteers and experts who work here are dedicated to the husbandry of many of the world's most critically endangered turtle species. Their efforts are literally saving species from extinction, making this a truly exceptional place that is very special to a guy like me. So anybody that watches the show knows I love turtles and knows I'm a member of the Turtle Survival Alliance, the TSA. Today, I'm here with the Director of Animal Management, my buddy Chris Hagen, along with Axel, their He's even into protecting turtles as well. But basically today, we are going to show you behind the scenes of their new turtle survival center somewhere in South Carolina. So get ready because we're about to look at some of the world's most rare animals. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. So Chris, this place has actually started construction in 2013. Man, you guys have done a lot of work, man. Yeah, After man. you, bro. Show me, what are we looking at here? We are looking at a forested complex for a variety of Asian species, um, semi-terrestrial species that live in temperate environments, primarily from China and Vietnam. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Pretty rad. We have some Chinese box turtles at home. Um, I love the way you guys have kind of made the enclosures. Obviously, you know, outdoors is great for this particular species. These guys can take cooler temps that you have here, right? They're a temperate species? Yes. They hibernate during the winter for about three to four months. Beautiful, beautiful, really nice. Is that a male? Yeah. Yeah, large male, right on. So, you know, talk to me a little bit about, I mean, a lot of people, I know about it, but the, the crisis in Asia, why are you keeping so many Asian species for the folks out there that don't really know? Well, because um, in, in the 1980s, uh, turtles started uh, being collected heavily uh, for the traditional Chinese medicine trade, also for the pet trade, and for the food trade. Uh, so uh, the pet trade all over the world, but the food trade in China and the traditional Chinese medicine trade uh, took a serious toll on a lot of species throughout Asia to where they're essentially being vacuumed out of all of the countries that they occurred in uh, to the point where some are now actually extinct in the wild most likely uh, or they're they're functionally extinct meaning that they are no longer viable populations there are just a few individuals out there in the wild so basically what the TSA has created here is one giant turtle bank or Noah's Ark if you will for these Asian species and Correct. in some cases like you just said they don't exist any longer in the wild yes most likely like your Vietnamese palm turtles that yes. you guys do keep here Correct. It's sad, man. There's yeah. a species that doesn't even exist in its home range anymore. But that's a beautiful uh, turtle right there. Can you show me? I know you have uh, a species I want to get my hands on. Yeah. Uh, the the big-headed turtle. Where are those guys? And I love right these enclosures, here. man. This is so amazing. So we designed these enclosures to be very versatile for a wide variety of species. I see. Okay. Oh, look at this. This is awesome. So check it out, he's going in to get the big-headed turtle, and these, these animals are found in Southeast Asia in cool mountain streams. They're actually really, really cool uh, uh, species because they're very good climbers. They can clamber over things, and look at this. This is why they call it the big-headed turtle. It's, it's similar to, look at this, I'm getting my hands on one. Look at that thing, man. 
That is incredible. The Latin platysternum. What is platysternum? platysternum me megacephalum. Megacephalum. Big head. That's what it means. And uh, these guys, talk to me a little bit about their uh, what they're doing in the wild. Why would they need such a big head? Is it for well, what they're eating? Well, you can see eating? they can't retract their head in, but yeah, it's for their food preference. So okay. they live in these uh, cool mountain streams where they're feeding on uh, like freshwater mollusks, oh, wow, crayfish, yeah. uh, hard-bodied insects that they have to crush with their jaws. Incredible. So you know, you'll also see in our continent here, uh, certain species of turtle like the diamondback terrapin will have a really developed uh, jaw to crush mollusks. And also certain species of map turtles mm -hmm. will also have that, but this I mean, it's just incredible. If this guy wanted, he'd probably give you a good bite. It's kind of like the Asian snapping turtle in a way. Yeah, and they even have a very long tail like our snapping turtles yeah. do as well. That are used for leverage because they can climb up waterfalls and, uh, wow. and rocks and, and even the low-lying brush and trees and they can use this to help leverage themselves as they climb. That is, uh, just one more time, yeah. man. I'm really excited to be, be on this guy. So how many are you guys working with here at the center? We have about a half dozen here. We have okay. some eggs incubating right no now. Way. It'll be our first time hatching. We have four eggs that are developing right now. We hope they hatch in about a month. It'll be our first time breeding them. And this is just a really special animal for me. And I love the tubercles, the tubercles here. Uh, if you look, you could just see these really cool tubercles. Uh, but definitely an awesome little species. But look at that. He's really showing off the head right now. And again, you guys have, you know, uh, David Manser helped you guys with Correct. these enclosures. Yeah. Uh, David is a uh, renowned uh, zoo uh, exhibit uh, creator. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the center, it's a nonprofit here. The TSA is a nonprofit organization. So they have to do things, as he said, to be versatile. But what's really neat is you guys have created a flowing stream mm -hmm. to mimic what these animals encounter in their natural habitat. I mean, yeah. this is really exciting. And oh, look, he's getting a little, getting a little toot. I think we should put him back down, huh? Yeah. Go for it, dude. Right. Go back in your little stream, man. Perfect. So we're actually handling another species, Quora here, and Quora are box turtles that are generally found in Southeast Asia, or Asian species. They're only uh, cousins to our North American box turtles, and they're only related because they have the hinge. But what's so special about the animal we're holding right now, or you're holding right now? Well, this is a, um, a species from Central Vietnam known as the Barrett's box turtle, um, also commonly called the flowerback box turtles. There are three species found from China down through Central Vietnam and Laos. And um, they, um, they're interesting, they're forest dwelling species. Uh, they're not aquatic, you can see they're high dome, they're more terrestrial, they hang out in the forest leaf litter a lot. Um, they're being uh, collected heavily for the pet trade in China and also for food. And um, so we're, we're, they're difficult to reproduce in captivity. There's not been a lot of success. Uh, so we're trying to work out the, 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 the kinks or the bugs, so to speak, and getting them to reproduce well and so we, we can build um, captive populations of these for the future. And hopefully someday uh, all of these animals we can start uh, repatriating young you offspring know, into the wild. That's something I wanted to ask you about. You know, the TSA, obviously, the goal is zero turtle extinctions in the 21st century, and that's why yeah. the center exists, yeah. so that you can manage the breeding. Just explain to me, you know, you were telling me earlier about pair breeding. You yeah. guys are actually keeping very close track Correct. of what uh, fathers and mothers are yeah. producing what. All of our turtles have microchips in them. They're all individually identified. Um, we can scan them. Uh, we also have other. They also have other physical features that identify them as well. But yes, every turtle that we have here, the the uh, the, the the idea is to breed them in pairs, so we actually know what their genetic lineage is, so we can maximize that genetic diversity for the future with the offspring of, of the animals that are produced here. So it's and we can um, you know send some out to zoos and to gotcha. other people, universities, private people that, that, that work with these species so we can have a larger, greater managed population throughout the United States. And, and that is a, again another cool thing about the TSA and why it's such an honor for me to be involved because you know they look for, as he mentioned, zoos and private keepers like myself that are very dedicated to these animals so that they can just, you, know, you can't do it all here. You're going to yeah. need some help. And that's why we're doing this video also is I want people to know how you can help. We're going to tell you how you can help in just a little bit at the end of the show. But we still have so much more to yeah. see, don't we? Yeah. Well, let's get to it, man. Okay. I'm excited. All right, great.
So security is also a big issue, not only for predators, but you know, uh, some of these animals are quite rare, huh? Yes, very rare. Some uh, probably don't exist in the wild anymore, like the uh, Vietnamese pond turtles that we're about to take a look at. Okay, after you. So the TSA has been around for just about 15 years, started in 2001. Yeah. But already you guys have had such an impact because India, Myanmar, Belize, Madagascar, and now here Correct. are all centers. They're not only in the United States, they actually have these centers in C2. Mm -hmm. And what are you guys doing there? For well, we people? have rescue centers to deal with confiscations on the ground to get animals uh, um, uh, cleaned up and back out into the wild as soon as possible and also breeding facilities. Uh, mm -hmm. We have assurance colonies in other countries as well. But the primary uh, focus is also is primarily for rescue um, from confiscations and getting these animals uh, fixed and cleaned up and back, back out. So uh, hopefully we're going to throw some uh, food in here and see if we can get um, some of these Vietnamese pond turtles to potentially come up from the bottom. And, and these, these are species that are completely eradicated in their natural habitat, Correct. in their home range. I so think the last exist. one was found in the wild, uh, I believe in 2006, I think. Wild. Yeah. That's, that's a shame, man. Uh, I can see one down here, Yeah, man, there's one down here, and... Um, maybe there's some on land. Man. Yeah, they're, they're often up on land, too. Hey, in fact, there yeah, we go. Yeah, here's nice. one right here. That's right under our feet, yeah. man. Uh, we're not very good turtle uh, finders, I suppose. But there is... Incredible, that's a, a, a fundamentally extinct in the wild. Not extinct forever because of the TSA, because there are a few privates that have this, and yeah. the TSA has this colony here to reproduce, and the yeah. goal is, you know, once things stabilize, you know, and that's such yeah. a problem, we talk about getting these animals back into the wild, mm -hmm. but, you know, realistically, how, how well realistic is that to get these animals well, back out? They'll just get fished out again. Well, some, for some species, it's a little more difficult, more complicated than others. Uh -huh. um, I think in, in the long run, we're waiting on culture to change, which could yeah. take many decades. And hopefully uh, someday we, the, these animals won't be sought after for the food and medicine and pets that they are now. Mm -hmm. And they can go back out in the wild. We need to identify protected areas that have enforcement uh, to be able to protect those areas. And, and then we can get these animals back out into the wild. And, and Luckily, these turtles breed very well in captivity, so we can supply exactly. lots of hatchlings um, to, to the folks in Vietnam that are working with this species if they need them, and they can get them back out into the wild. And again, that's, that's another reason why they have these centers now in five different countries, because you know they can work with many of the indigenous species of turtles and tortoises that are actually there and you do a lot of outreach with for the folks Correct. and stuff even around here in yep. South Carolina uh, you know earlier speaking with Shana your vet tech your, the vet tech they actually have a really cool hospital on site here mm -hmm. for these animals but you know she was talking about some of the folks just think is this a good turtle or a bad turtle and it's yep. like people just don't know yep. and that's part of what I'm trying to do with Camp Cannon is mm -hmm. get the word out and why I'm so happy to be here uh, seeing what you guys are doing because it's always been inspirational to me to see what the TSA is really up to. Mm -hmm. So this is the largest pond you guys have, a uh, natural earth yeah. pond. Mm -hmm. And who's in here? We have uh, geoclemmies in here, the Indian spotted pond turtle. Well, you know, it's it's just incredible to see how much work has been done. But you guys actually have a lot and many more plans in the future as well, yes. don't you? A lot more expansion, a lot more buildings and, and enclosures to put up for, for different species. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So there's a lot of work. There's over what, 300 different species of turtles and tortoises and, and more than three quarters of those are endangered. They're actually the number one air-breathing vertebrate facing extinction as a group of animals. No other animal is more endangered than turtles and tortoises. So the work that guys like Chris are doing and Rick Hudson from the Turtle Survival Alliance is very important. So folks, why don't you go to turtlesurvival.org. Anything you can do, if it's a dollar, five bucks, if you're really feeling beneficial or benevolent, go ahead and throw 10 bucks in there because the money goes directly to keeping centers like this going, keeping them funded, keeping salaries paid, and keeping turtles alive. Thanks so much, Chris. I really yeah. appreciate your time. Anytime. I really do appreciate it. I'm pretty psyched. And guess what, guys? This is not the last episode you're going to see from the Turtle Survival Center. We have many more things we'd like to show you in the weeks to come. So thanks for joining us. For now, we're going to try and get these geoclemmies up here, guys. We got your food, man. You guys hungry or what?
sure you got something to use? Ah, oh, look, yeah, here's one. We'll see you next time.